Hey, what's up everyone? In this part of the series, we're gonna continue working on our game. Basically, we're gonna add this animation to tell the user that he can swipe to move the ball and we will only play the game when we tap on the screen. So before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you don't miss my next videos. And let's get started. So in our previous video, we've created this player controller script that moves the ball as soon as we start playing. But that makes the game a little bit hard and annoying. We only want to start when we tap on the screen. And to do that, we have to create a script that manages our game states to check whether the game is started or not, whether it's supposed or not, and so on. Then under the player controller script, we will check if the game isn't started. We need to return and don't move the ball. First, I'm gonna add another folder to put our scripts using right click, create folder, and let's call it scripts. And let's drag these two under this folder. And that will make our project well organized. Now let's right click again, create C sharp script, and let's call it player manager. Also, we have to attach it to an object under our game using right click, create empty. I'm gonna call it player manager as well. Then let's attach our script to this empty game object. Then let's open it up in VS Code. First, let's create a variable and I'm gonna call it level started to check whether the level is started or not using public so that we can access it from other scripts. Then static. And static means a global variable that we can access very easily so that we can use it in our player controller script and check if this boolean is true. Then we need to move the ball, otherwise we return. Then we add the type, which is a boolean, true or false. I'm gonna call it level started. By default, I'm gonna set it to false once we start the game. Using level started equals false. And under the update method, we're gonna check if we have touched the screen. Then we're gonna change this boolean to true. And here I'm using the new input system. If you want to check it out, make sure to watch my previous video about the player controller script in which we have moved the ball using the mouse or the touch screen. Basically, we can access the touch screen device using this touch screen class. And it comes with the new input system package. So we have to import it or use it using unity engine dot input system and then we can create this touch screen object that's the type let's call it screen or ts touch screen equals touch screen dot current then let's add if we have to check if we have a touch screen using ts is not null and we have touched the screen using ts dot primary touch dot press then dot is pressed so this will return true if we touch the screen in such case we have to start the level by changing the boolean level started to true later on you could add other stuff under here for example playing sound effect when we start or removing the start menu and I'm gonna add another condition so if this boolean is already true we don't have to change it I'm gonna add and level started equals false or you could change this with another syntax using this exclamation mark if the level is not started then we're gonna change it to true now we can move on to the player controller script and access this boolean to check whether the level is started or not. And under the update method, we are moving the ball using transform.translate. Here we are going to check if player manager, which is the name of the script, dot, and we can access the level started boolean because we have declared it as static and public, which means a global variable. In such case, we can return 
using return. Now let's save our scripts using file. Save all. Let's go back into Unity. First of all, I have to fix this error. And it is under the player manager script. It is called input system. And let's save it again. And we have another mistake. The false keyword starts with a lowercase f. The same thing for the true keyword. And before we test this game on our computer, we have to simulate the touch screen because I'm using a mouse. And to enable that, you have to go under window, analysis, then under input debugger, make sure to enable this option from the options menu, which is simulate touch input from mouse or pen. But we still have the same problem. The ball starts moving as soon as we play. Let's go back to the player controller script. Here I'm checking if the level started, then we return. And that's exactly the opposite. We have to check if the level isn't started using this exclamation mark. In such case we return. And if it's started, we have to move the ball. Now let's hit play again. And there you go, the ball is not moving. And if I tap on the screen or using the mouse, we can play, so it's working. Before I finish this video, I'm gonna add a hand image. Then I'm gonna move it left and right to inform the user that he can drag on the screen to play. And to do that, I have some sprites like this hand. We can add it on this screen using the Unity UI system. Basically, you can create a UI image using right click then UI and here we have lots of options like slider, toggle and so on I'm gonna use a simple image and that will create this canvas and under the canvas we have our UI elements like our image I'm gonna call it hand then from the inspector I'm gonna minimize this window we can select a sprite like this hand but before that, we have to change its type. We can change it to a sprite from this menu, which is sprite 2D and UI. Then let's hit apply. Now we can use it as our image of this hand object by selecting a sprite from this point. Or we can drag it like this. The same thing, we can change some properties like the width and the height. Let's use 20 by 20. I think that's too small. Let's try 40 by 40. Also, we can move it on the Y axis. Let's try with minus 100 or 170. Also, we can animate it and move it left and right. To do that, we can use the animation window. Basically, we can select an object to animate it. Then we can go under window animation then animation and here we can add some keyframes to animate the hand first you have to create an animation using create and I want to add another folder like animation and let's put it inside it we can give it a name like hand swipe then let's hit save after that we can record using this record button then to save a keyframe you can change this value a bit then give it back to zero and that will save the first keyframe then let's move to 10 and change the exposition to 100 then let's select the keyframe 20 and change it to zero again and move it to the other side using 30 minus 100 and to loop the animation we have to give it back to its initial position at the keyframe 40 let's change it to 0 and that will move the hand left and right you could also test this animation by hitting this play button as you can see it's a little bit fast to make it slower you could increase the spacing between these keyframes or you could go under animation 
here we have the hand swipe animation clip it is set to loop time make sure that it's checked also we have this animator controller that controls all of the animations when you double click on it it's going to open up this animator window I'm using the middle mouse to move here we have the hand swipe animation if you select it from here then under the inspector we have the speed parameter let's change it to a lower number like 0.3 and that will change the speed and there you go we have this cool animation and if you get this error don't worry it is because of the new input system to fix it you have to select the event system object you simply need to replace with the new input system using this button as you can see we have this cool animation and if I tap on the screen we can move the ball but we still have this image as I said we can remove this object once we start the game but before that I'm gonna create a panel that contains all of the UI elements using right click under this canvas UI panel I'm gonna call it start menu panel then let's drag the hand image under this object and from the inspector I'm gonna reduce the opacity to zero and then we can disable or enable this object if the level is started or not and to do that let's go back to the player manager script we can disable our start menu under this if statement but before that we have to add a reference to it using public game object and let's call it start menu panel we're gonna reference this object from the inspector I'm gonna start with the lower s let's go down below and use start menu panel then dot set active if we pass in false it will disable the object once we start the level so let's save our script using ctrl s then select the player manager script and reference the start menu panel by dragging this object and let's hit play so i think that's pretty much it guys for this video i hope you like it if you have any question or comment make sure to write it under the comment section down below in the next video i'm gonna add the collision detection that's why make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you get notified when i release new video and I will see you in the next one.